Okay, so you might have seen this floating around on the internet. CVS has started marketing these new disposable digital cameras, both still and video. And they run about 17, 15 bucks American dollars for the stills and about 30 for the video. Problem is, everything about them is proprietary. You have to take it back to CVS, have them pull the pictures or the data off of them, put them on CD for you and give them back. That's another like an $11 charge. So you're looking at like 30 or 40 dollars just to get about 25 pictures. That, my friends, is a ripoff. All right, so there are some geeks out there that agreed with me, and they discovered how to make these cameras reusable using some custom-made software, some tools they've programmed, and USB. Here's your list of supplies. You're going to need a USB female B connector, soldering iron, solder, a multimeter, a Dremel, and some hot glue. Okay, before you take anything apart, what you're going to have to do is find out what firmware version your camera's running. You do this by holding down the shutter button and the display button at the same time and then hitting the on button. It'll come up on the LCD what firmware version you're using. Ours was using 6550 and that's what all this is based off of. If you're running 6520, you're lucky because that's a lot easier. Okay, now that you know what the firmware is, you can go ahead and disassemble the camera. There's three screws in the back and a bunch of locking tabs all around it. Now, Take all the screws out, and when you're popping the lock tabs, be careful. You need to save them. Try not to break them as much as possible. Once you open it up, you'll see the board in front of you with the LCD. And on the left-hand side, you'll see the proprietary connection that CVS uses. And we're going to be soldering leads onto that that lead to our USB connector. Okay, we'll have a picture in the show notes telling you where pin 1 is on this proprietary connector. And we're going to be using pins 6, 7, 8, and 9. Pin 6 is your positive 5 volt USB. Pin 7 is the USB ground. Pin 8 is your USB positive data. And pin 9 is USB negative data. Okay, first of all, now that you have it open, find a place that's going to be convenient for you to mount the USB female connector. Then from there, you just follow the pinout diagram on the connector and solder accordingly to those proprietary pins. Okay, now that you have all your connections made and your plug is mounted, just figure out where it's going to be on the case, draw a little marker on it, use your Dremel and cut out a hole so that way it's nice and tucked away, it doesn't look bad, and you've got easy access. From there, go ahead and take the board, mount it back to one half of the cover so you still have access to the back panel, snug it up, because now we're going to move on to software and we still need access to that board. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start gathering all our tools, software tools that we're going to need to do this. First off is going to be the PV2 tool 2.13, the Lib USB Win32 filter bin 0.1.8.0 and the Lib USB Win32 bin 0.1.8.0. From here, we can go ahead and install the Lib USB device bins and the filter bins. Now, once they're installed, gain access to the libusb.inf file and you have to add strings for 27, 28, 2B, 2F, and 30. We'll have the full string line in the show notes for you. Now we can go ahead and run the PV2 tool and you just plug the USB cable in to the connection you made and your computer. Now with that board exposed, please be careful and avoid the flash capacitor. That's 200 to 300 volts. It's going to zap you hard. Now with PV2 tool running and the USB cable connected between the camera and the computer, go ahead and click open in PV2 tool. Hopefully you'll see PID27 if you're using the CVS RED camera. Find the RAM module behind the LCD, starting on the bottom pin, count up to the sixth one. Take the probe from your multimeter, bridge pins six and seven. While, while they're still bridged, unplug the USB cable, wait a few seconds, plug it back in. Hopefully you'll hear two death beeps. They're very distinct. You'll, you'll know what they are. If you did, great. We can move on. If you didn't, just lather, rinse, repeat until you do. At this point, I'm assuming that you've heard the two death beeps. Go ahead and unbridge 6 and 7 on the RAM, click open in the uh, PV2 tools, and then find your SDRAM key scan. What that's going to do is scan the keys in the firmware and pull them down, then click unlock. This is going to unlock the camera so that in future uses we don't have to go through this process every time. Okay, at this point we can't take you any farther. We have this crazy little thing in America called the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which forbids this. But the software will walk you through it. You're like 99% of the way there now, so don't, don't fret. 
We'll have links in the show notes that'll take you to all the pertinent information that's hopefully not on American servers. But there you go. That's how you hack the Red CVS camera. All your pertinent information, links in the show notes. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.